time for theme number two, 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 two. Uh, we are going to make some fun pinwheels. Yes, dimensional pinwheels. And I thought, okay, when I was thinking about what to share with you, you know, like my theme that I love is machine embroidery, right? A lot of you love machine embroidery. Kimberbell does a lot of machine embroidery. We do a lot of sewing too, uh, but a lot of machine embroidery. And so I was thinking, well, I could show something like that, but why not show you something that whether you sew or you machine embroider or you just like to craft, this is something that you can do. And the stabilizers that I'm going to use um, are not just for machine embroidery. This is going to show you that you can do this with um, crafting too, all right? So these are the pinwheels. I've got my flowers here to show you. Ah, look how cute. All right, let me see. There we go. How many are loving this? Look how darling these are. Kimberly says, I'm Kim. My name is Kim and I'm a Kimberbell addict. Kimberly, I love you. I love you. All right. So this is what we're going to make today. Super easy to do. Super fun. Lots of possibilities to, to do to what to do with them. I put them on some sticks here. Lots of fun ways to decorate them. Look how cute that would be. Little girl's hair. Yeah. Put that on a like a, a clip or a headband, um, make a garland with it, make them to stick in cute pots of flowers. This would be so fun to do with your kids, your grandkids, your grandchildren. It could be mom of the year, grandma of the year, grandpa of the year, dad of the year, best friend of the year. You're going to love making these pinwheels because they're so easy, so simple. And of course... I'm Kimberbell, so of course I'm going to use Kimberbell fabrics to do them in, right? So today's uh, little uh, tutorial is using my brand new fabric line called Red, White, and Bloom. Red, White, and Bloom. Are you ready? Let me hold on just one second. I'm going to grab my fabric scraps here. All right. I've got lots of fabric where I live. <laughs> How many of you give me a thumbs up or a heart or something that says, hey, I've got that fabric, or I want that fabric, or I love that fabric. How's that? <laughs> this is brand new, red, white, and bloom. It screams all things summer. But you know what I love about this line? Ooh, is that... Uh, not only is it perfect for summer or 4th of July, oh, everything's backwards here, there we go, um, but it also has some prints that are just beautiful for any time of the year. I love, this is one of my favorites right there. All right, then we've got the fireworks. Oh, we've got all sorts of things. Oh, one of my favorites, very favorites, is, I don't know how well you can see that. Let's see, the, wor the wordy print. It's a tonal print, and um, on the Kimber Bellis page months and months and months and months ago, when I was designing this line, I asked you, what words come to mind when you think about um, summer, patriotism, family, barbecues, you know, what, what kinds of themes do you think about? And you gave me hundreds of words to go through, and so I compiled them all and decided what were the most popular words, and that is what is found on the wordy word print. So there's things like sparklers and celebrate and barbecue and corn on the cob and watermelon, s'mores, family. Oh my goodness, there's some apple pie. So many fun things, fireworks. Anyway, so that's one of my favorite prints too. All right, so you're gonna need some fabric. It does not matter how much. Um, I a, a little birdie told me that for number three today, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but for number three, there is gonna be a little Fat Eighth bundle for sale of Kimberbell's red, white, and bloom fabric. So uh, check that out a little bit later. 
Let's take a look at how cute that is up close. Look at that with those fabrics. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. Now, the other thing you're, so you're going to need fabric. <laughs> Guess what? No sewing machine on this one. Are you ready for that? Isn't that nice? Sometimes we, you know, we love our sewing, we love our machine embroidery, but sometimes we just need that little something that is going to just be a fun craft project, right? So this one is a no-sew project, but you will be interested in a couple of Kimberbell stabilizers. Again, this is not just for, uh, for machine embroidery. This is also for sewing. So one of my very favorites, I use this on everything, everything. Whether I am hand embroidering, yep, I still do a little bit of hand embroidery and, uh, to relax in the evenings, okay? I use it on the back of that. I use it on the back of my applique blocks, my quilt blocks. I love our fusible backing. So this is what it looks like, Oop, fusible backing. So you'll want some of that. In fact, I just happen to have a roll that is undone and you probably know about our slap bands. So. This is once the, the fusible backing or any of the stabilizers are out of the package, you just slap this baby on and now you don't have any uh, stabilizer rolling all around. So I'm gonna use my fusible backing for this project and I'm going to use another specialty stabilizer we just came out with called Kimberbell's Fusible Peel and Stick. Peel and Stick, it comes uh, in sheets like this, okay? So those are the two stabilizers I'm going to use. And then you're gonna want a glue gun, an iron, and scissors, you know, stuff like that. Buttons, all sorts of fun stuff. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. I What I've already done here is I've taken, you want two different contrasting fabrics, okay? And think about just, you know, how they, color coordinate and on the back of it you're going to fuse the fusible backing onto it all right now why do you use fusible backing besides this type of thing um, I use fusible backing as I mentioned earlier on the back of quilt blocks especially when I uh, need to applique onto that quilt block what fusible backing does is it gives that fabric support it gives it structure so that um, you don't it helps prevent puckering how many of you don't like the puckers and you get done with something with your embroidery machine or your sewing machine and you've got puckering going around the applique oh no no longer my friends no 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 you will prevent puckering by using fusible backing, all right? So um, I iron that back onto just about anything. It gives the, the, the fabric a little more stability, but it's still very soft and supple. And that's what I love about our fusible backing is that it still flows like fabric, but it's going to give it that structure, just that little extra structure you need uh, so that it, um, doesn't pucker your, your appliques. So that's one reason why I like it. Another reason why I like the fusible backing is because it uh, prevents shadowing. How many of you have ever taken um, like a white piece of fabric and you went to applique it on top of a black piece of fabric or a darker piece of fabric and you see the shadow of that darker fabric behind it, right? Well, you don't have to worry about that when you put on this layer of uh, fusible backing, all right? So what I've done here is I wanted it to be on these pinwheels because I wanted it to not be floppy, all right? If I didn't have that, then you run the risk of your, your pinwheels going like this, right? And not having some structure. So that's why I used it on the back of this. So all I did is I just put the fusible side down and I pressed it for about 10 seconds on a dry uh, iron, okay? All right, I'm just looking at any comments right now. Um, okay, so there we go. So about 10 seconds, I, like, I never like to use steam. This is personal preference, but this is Kim's little tip. 
I don't like to use steam on this. I actually like to use a dry iron and put it on cotton setting, a high setting, and press it for about 10 seconds and then move it. Don't do this, okay? Um, Chris and I like to use the, the term press, don't stress, okay? Don't stress your fabric out by moving your iron. You just hold it on, one, two, three, four, five, and 10, okay? 10 seconds, then you move to the next area, 10 seconds. You need a good adhesion, okay? So you've done that. You've done that to the back of two fabrics. What I would suggest, especially since um, this bundle that's gonna be coming up for sale here is a nine by 21 inch piece, pieces of fabric. Um, what I would suggest is that I would take just your, like a nine, inch wide by I think it's a 20 inch wide roll and just press the whole thing on the back of that fabric and then cut the blocks the, the size that you want them okay what size of blocks to use oh my gosh you guys are you ready for this I've gone as little as two by two ah, look at that okay can that get any cuter two by two my friends Two by two is this one, and then I actually double layered this one. See, this is a single layer. This is how much fun you can have with this. Double layer, single layer. Um, this is, I started out with a two by two, and then I, I stacked it with, I think the one behind it was like a two and a half by two and a half inch one. So um, you can do it as small as that. The larger ones, like this that you see in the pot, whoop, I think I did at eight inches, I believe, eight inch square, okay? So I've got my two squares and by the magic of television, they're already done. <laughs> All right, how cute is that? So I've got two squares. I think these are, I think I did four and a half inches on this, okay? So what I'm saying is if you've got your fusible backing and you've just laid it out and pressed it all across your, the back of your fabric, just cut up any size of squares you want. I think the more random, the better. You could have two and a half square inch squares. You could have three and four, three, four squares. You know, it doesn't matter what size it is. Just something that looks good to you, okay? So... Uh, they already have the fusible backing on it, which is going to help give it some structure and stability. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your peel and stick. comes in sheets. Okay, let me show you. There you go. Sheets like this. I don't know how well you can tell, but there's a paper side and then there's kind of a, a rougher side, we'll say. Kind of a glue side. All right, and then you're going to cut those in the same size of squares that you cut your blocks in, okay? So because this was a four and a half by four and a half, I think, <laughs> I cut this four and a half by four and a half, okay? So now this is where it gets tricky because Chris knows exactly how to position this camera so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Aha, how's that? I've got the iron behind me, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rougher side of this with the paper side up, and I'm going to fuse this to the back of my four and a half inch square. Now, some people might go, well, why don't you just do that all at the same time? Well, you could, but you only need one square per two blocks, okay? So you'd be wasting a lot. So I'm just going to now do it separate. So I'm going to just pull one of my squares over here. <laughs> you still with me here? Okay, the sticky kind of rougher side down, paper side up. There we go. And I'm going to press it for, again, about 10 seconds. Okay. All right. This is probably where Chris gets her, gets uh, really close here. There we go. How's that, my friends? Okay, all right, and I'm just going to press it for 10 seconds. So we're just singing a song, humming, humming along, singing a song. Isn't that what Chris would say? <laughs> all righty, this is very exciting. 
Does anyone have questions <laughs> while I'm pressing for 10 seconds? Let's see. Uh, Gina says, twins for sure. I am listening while working, and every once in a while I look at the screen. Yep, that's not Chris, but it sure sounds like Chris. That is true. Our husbands, if they call, they, they don't mix us up, I promise that. But <laughs> if they call and one of us answers or we're on the phone or something, they don't know who they're talking to. So they got to be careful. <laughs> All right, guys, see what I'm doing? I'm pressing. I'm not stressing. Well, there we go. There we go. Just 10 seconds at a time. You want to get a nice, good adhesion. I'm going to tell you why this is different than something like a fusible web, like a heat and bond. Some of you may be familiar with that, but this is a, a different product. So I'll tell you why I love it so much. All right. I think that's a pretty good press. All right. Lisa says, so glad you came on today. Yay, thank you. <laughs> All right, and the iron is called Steam Fast. I love it because it is portable. All right. Oop. Here we go. I'm totally channeling my inner Chris here. So there we go. There it is. I'm at Chris's home, by the way. So <laughs> she better be in bed right now. Chris, if you're watching this, you better be in bed. Okay, so I press that on the back of one of the pieces of fabric. This is the other piece, all right? And now I'm going to just kind of let it cool off for a minute. But here's the cool part. This is called peel and stick. Well, let's tell, show you why. Because when I pull this paper off, guess what? It becomes like a sticker, my friends. It becomes a sticker. This is sticky. This means for this means a few things for those who, who love peel and this peel and stick. This means that I could like lay this down at, uh, as an applique some, on something, and if I didn't like the position it was in, I just have to lift it up because it's a uh, it it's not going to be permanent right now. So I can just peel it up and then move it over to the next position I want to put it in. Or if I've got, you know, layers of fabric that I'm trying to put in into place and I'm not quite sure where I want to audition it, you can do that with peel and stick. It's got the stick right there, okay? So now I'm going to take this and wrong sides together, I'm going to put them together. Now, I'm gonna move my camera here. Are you ready? Oop. I think that will work. Let me move a few things. All right, got my stick. Got my other piece of fabric that just has the fusible backing on it. And now I'm just going to lay them one on top of the other and stick it like a sticker. That's it. That is it. Done, done. So simple. I don't have to take an iron to it anymore. Those babies are stuck together. All right. Now, no matter how good of a cutter you are, sometimes you see a little ridge, you know, because I think I got it at exactly four and a half inches. No big deal. All you want to do, I like to do this every time, is I'm going to just trim that up again. So oh, let me grab just one last time. Give it a little haircut, all right? Just to make sure that I've got it exactly where I want it, okay? Making sure it's nice and square. All the pieces are fused together, the whole bit, okay? Now remember, this only needed one layer. Oops, sorry guys. This only, now look how nice and clean that edge is, right? Okay, don't forget, this only needed one layer. Jan Janita says both have the peel and stick. Nope, 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 nope. You only need one piece of peel and stick. You need two pieces of the fusible backing, okay? Fusible backing, we ironed to the back of two different fabrics, okay? Both fabrics had it. In fact, I've got another sample right here. OK, 
okay? Both of these two fabrics have the fusible backing on them. But now to sandwich those and marry those two blocks together, all you need is one piece of peel and stick. You just put it on the back of one of those blocks, peel off the backing, and now it has a sticker, and now you stick those two together, okay? Nice and neat. Give it a good little trim. All right. Um, is the Terry says, is the fusible backing cloth fusible backing cloth or a paper product? It is a paper uh, product that you are, you are peeling off, okay? All right, so there you have it, my friends. That's how you stick those two blocks together. Now, here's the fun part. I am going to cut this with, um, with just a pair of scissors whoop, at each corner. Okay, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to cut it diagonally from corner to, to the center, but not all the way across. Obvious reasons, right? You don't want to cut it off. So I'm going to start here in one corner, and I'm just going to eyeball to about, about the center, okay? Now, I am not going to get out a ruler. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Okay, don't get out a ruler. Don't worry about how far, you know, you're cutting. You just want to cut. Whoop, here we go. There we go. You just want to cut towards the center. All right. Notice how I did not go all the way. And I don't want to go all the way to the middle because that's going to cut my triangle off. In fact, what I like to think about and visually think about in my mind is that in the center of this pinwheel, there's a coin, okay? So as the, the maybe the smaller, the, the square, maybe you have a, a dime in the middle, right? But the bigger the square gets, maybe there's like a, a quarter in the middle. Just visualize that, and then you know how far to cut. But again, don't worry about getting out a ruler uh, and measuring something because no need, okay? Now, another fun way thing to do, inst if you, instead of doing straight edge, what about do using pinking shears? Hmm? There's a thought. Pinking shears would be so, so cute, okay? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take one corner and fold it into the center. There we go. And uh, then and to adhere to keep it together, you're going to use your hot glue gun, so I'll get that out in a minute, but I'm just going to visually show you what I'm doing here first. Then you skip a triangle, and you go to the next, skip a triangle, go to the next, and there. Ooh, well, something like that, right? <laughs> we'll get there, okay? So, but here is the real question. Do you want to go from this side to the front? Or do you want to go from this side to the front? It's all up to you. There's no right or wrong. You just have to take a look at it and go, ooh, I think I want more of the red to show, and I want my blue to be the little pinwheel. But then you could do completely the opposite and have the blue show more with the red in the middle. All right? doesn't matter. In fact, what I like to do is I like to take two uh, two sets of blocks that are exactly the same and then do one one way and then the other set of blocks I do the other way and then super cute. Okay, now I'm going to use my trusty little glue gun and glue this down. You'll want something um, to hold this down while you're gluing it because while it's drying because no one wants a burned finger. So I actually use um, an R and K turning tool. Boy, there's a lot of uses for this tool. I believe girlfriend sells them. I think they're on sale today, possibly, maybe. <laughs> I I hope because I just said that. If not, just tell them Kim sent you. Okay, so uh, you're going to put a little dab of glue right there in the middle. Let's pull this up a little bit more. Okay. 
boy, if Kim's in charge, I'm going to say, hey, 90% off everything, right? <laughs> okay, glue in the middle, and then I'm going to hold it with my R&K turning tool. Um, I like this instead of like a pencil because uh, this, the glue, the hot glue will just peel right off of that metal. Okay, so let's get to it. I like to uh, just put a little ring of glue. This is all going to be covered up with a button a little bit later. Okay. And I'm just going to put one in there and then remember I'm going to skip a triangle, go to the next triangle and put that one in. I can hold it down like this. There we go. I skip a triangle, go to the next one. Skip a triangle, go to the next one. Oh, that's coming up. Yeah, there we go. If I need to use a little more glue there, oh! <laughs> Look at Kim trying to talk and glue and hold at the same time. Impossible. Okay, time for the glue gun. Bringing out the big guns. <laughs> All right, there we go. Ooh. Where's my tool? Where's my tool? There we go. Okay, do you see how nice that is? We're just going to sit here. Just let it do its thing. Just let it do its thing. Hey, I would suggest not using a, um, what do they call it, low temp glue gun? Don't use a low temp. Go, go all the way. Go all the way to the high temp. That's going to hold it a lot better. Okay, so I'm just going to hold this for a few seconds till that glue dries. It doesn't matter if it looks messy right now, because you're covering it up with a button. Okay, there we go. See, kind of messy, no big deal. We got a button for that. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna go to my little stash of buttons. Here we go. And I look at that and I go, ooh, I think I want a white one. Nice contrast, right? So I'm gonna put a little white one in the middle, again, with my glue. And that just drops. Let's get another one. <laughs> There's more where that came from. All right. I'm going to stick that in the middle there. Super cute, right? But wait, there's more. What if I'm going, you know what? Let's stack some buttons. I'm going to take a Kimberbell button, of course. And this comes from our um, cute as a button buttons, and it's a red and white polka dot. And I'm going to put that, on, I'm going to stack these. All right. Ah, how cute is that? Look at that. Oh my goodness. Mary says, I love this. Dorothy, yes, you're speaking my language, Dorothy. She says, Kimberbell buttons would be cute. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, my friend Lynn, that glue is hot. Who needs those fingerprints anyway? Yeah, it is. That's why I like the RK drain tool. I use this for a lot of things, including holding down hot glue. <laughs> all right, so I'm picturing all kinds of things. I'd love to hear what how you picture using these. Um, Ah, so, so fun, you guys. Oh, my gosh. You know, 4th of July, great idea. Oh, putting them in, like, soda pop bottles, like the old-fashioned Coke bottles, would be the cutest display, don't you think, uh, on your uh, table? Or you can put them on a, a dowel, like I did here. So cute. Okay. Um Oh, this one, I actually, instead of a button, I took uh, the Kimberbell red pom-poms and put that in the center. Isn't that fun? And how cute would this be? Okay, pick, go with me here. Picture this on a garland, and I take the red and white Kimberbell pom-poms or wool balls, okay, red, not pom-poms, wool balls, and um, I'm sure girlfriends has those too and string them on a, some twine, and then I string a bunch of these in between. That would be so cute, don't you think? Oh my gosh, okay. Anyone else have ideas? Uh, 
Barry says, I was just about to make one for Red, White, and Bloom. Thank you for the tutorial. So glad. Oh, Jill Breinholt. I love what you just said. Yes, old Coke bottles in a crate. That just took it over the top right there. In a crate. I love that, Jill. Good idea. And Bill, my friend, great garland idea. Thank you. Um, <laughs> oh, I hope Chris is watching this. Debbie says, how about a mobile above baby's beds? There's a story to that, isn't there? If you've been uh, a true three at three fan for years, you know, well, for years, for the last year, um, you know what Debbie's talking about, the mobile. Yeah. All right. Um, Cindy, did you just hot glue the dowel rod on top? I sure did, my friend. Boom. That's all. You see that? Just hot glued it. No big deal. How do you put it on a stick, Lynn? Yep. Glue. Uh, bouquet of pinwheels. Teresa Johnson, I love that idea. A bouquet of pinwheels. Wait for it. Okay. Here's one. Here's, here's some more. <laughs> here's some more. <gasps> so cute. And then going back to the mobile idea, what if you took a wood frame hoop and then hung these down? Oh, my goodness. Or just to make somebody's day. They they need a little pot of flowers, right? <laughs> and you put them in there. So cute. I actually, I'm at Chris's house, like I said. And she has some flowers that someone sent her. They're kind of dying. They're, they're getting to their last day. But look how cute it would be to just put a cute little one. I think this is a two and a half incher. Ah, so fun. There we go. That might be a four or five incher. <laughs> there you go. All right. Jan Wood. Great as a wand with streamers for the 4th of July princess. I love that. <laughs> Margie, fabulous ideas. Paula K. Zip tie a bunch to a fence or a porch railing. <gasps> Cute. Cute. Cute alert. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay, um, a wreath, yes, a wreath, absolutely. And Bill says a wreath too, yep, Marie, a wreath, yeah, love it, love it. Bonnie, a wreath, okay, you're all saying wreaths, I wanna see those wreaths. <laughs> those would be so cute. Tag me, if you tag girl, my girlfriend's quilt shop. And uh, Kimberbell, I'd love to see him. <laughs> 